You ever watch a movie once and, you know, it's a scary movie or it's a mystery movie and you're, you're like, what's going on? Is she going to make it? Is she not going to make it? Is he gonna... You ever try watching that movie again? Is it the same? The hidden miracles of Purim, which are so hidden that even the people that the miracles are being done for don't realize it at the time, that can only be experienced in retrospect. And the rabbis understood that the unique publicizing of the miracle of Purim is a miracle that took place, that was hidden, that you can only experience and appreciate when you look back. And so the double reading is, of course, in order to mimic this experience. When you get to the end of a story and connect all of the dots, you re-experience the story from a new perspective. You know, it's interesting in English, if you take the phrase, God is nowhere, and you just move the W over. So it says, God is now here. And that's the story of Purim. God was nowhere, and we realize God is now here. And if he's here now, he was here then, and so God was here all along. The main time that we read this Megillah, although the rabbis explain that Hamelch means Hashem, we could say, no, the first reading when everything is hidden, so is Hashem hidden, so that HaMelech seems like it's just the Pasha Pshat. Simple reading is it's, it's Achazveyush. It's only in the second reading that we realize it's Hashem. So the publicizing of Hashem's presence and providence throughout the entire story of Purim only happens in the second reading, which is representative of looking back, connecting the dots from after the fact, which brings Hashem out, and that's the publicizing of the miracle.